Creating split OTP inputs in React Native is natively not possible. There are some packages which can help in doing that. But in this video, I'm going to show you how we can achieve this result in our own simple way so that we can cut down on the number of packages we use in our project. This approach will work whether you're using Expo or not. To start this, I assume you have some React Native knowledge and a project already created. If not, I'll put some useful links in the description. So in my app, I have a page with a colored background and some text. I'll also use a few colors that I have defined in a colors file under components. We'll do some styling and I'll use styled components for that because I think it keeps the work cleaner. You can also use a regular style sheet if you know your way around that. The concept of what we'll be doing is that we'll make use of a regular text input as our source of truth. Now for each digit that is received, we'll render a styled view in the form of a box for it. After that, we'll hide the regular text input and call it using a reference whenever we need it. So in the directory where I have my component, I'll create one for OTP input field. In this file, we'll create a function for the component and export it. Now we'll bring in styled components and our colors. Using the styled components, we want to create a component for our source of truth, which is the text input. We'll hide it later on, so the name hidden text input is appropriate. Now we'll give it some basic styling so that it doesn't look so bad. Also, we will need a container for the whole input section, which will be a view as well. We will style it to center the content and have some margin vertically. Now we we'll use these two components in the return of the function. To see what we've done, we go to the app file and import the input field. Just below the text, we can mount it and expect to see it on the app. While we are here, the input field will need some variables, so let's create them. Some of them will be states, so we need the use state hook. The first state is code, and this will store the value that will be entered in the input field. The second one will be pin ready, and it will be a boolean which will be true if you have the number of digits we are expecting. So if you are expecting a 4 digit pin, pin ready will be true when you have all 4 of them. Also we need to know the length of code or pin we expect, and that will be the max length. We will initialize it to 4. Now we pass all the values but the pin ready to the input field. With that out of the way, we go back to the input field file. In the component function, we destructure the values we pass from the props. We then assign the code value to the hidden input field. Also, we add a function to set the value when it changes and also the maximum length of the input field. We will expect to receive only numbers, so we set the keyboard type to number pad. We can also add some extras, such as return key type and text content type. Now we need a reference and a function for handling the on-blare event, that is, when the input is out of focus. For the reference, we need the use ref hook. We'll then use this to create a ref variable with a now initial value. For the handle blur function, we'll just declare it and implement it later. With that done, we can pass the values to the input field. Now we need some styled components for the actual split input. The first will be another container for the row of input boxes. We want it to respond to presses, hence the pressable component. We will style it to take 70% of the screen width and also have spaces around the individual boxes in the row. Next, we need a box for each digit and that will be a view. We will style it to have a faint border around it and a minimum width of 15%. The last one will be the actual text in the box. This will have basic text styling and we ensure that it's aligned to the center. Down with that, we put the container above our regular text input. In this container, we want to map through the decades of the regular input and display the box for each of them. To do that, we need an array. So we create an array with the length of our maximum length. Using the fill method, we initialize the indexes with zeros. Now we need a function to handle the mapping and return a box for each digit. We will call it to code digit input. Yes, that's a mouthful, but let's manage it. This will receive the current value and the index from the map method. We will only use the index so we can prefix the value with an underscore. We start the function implementation by declaring some variables. The first is a string to render when an input box is empty, and that will be a white space. Next. We extract each digit from the code input string using the index. If it's empty, we fault the empty input character. With this, we can return the OTP input component with the text. 
the content will be the ticket and will pass the index as the key to the OTP component. Now in the container, we call the map method on the array and we pass the function we just created. This should give us the initial look of our input boxes. Now when we press on these boxes or the section of boxes, we need to trigger the keyboard and focus on our regular input field. Since our container is a pressable, we pass the onPress attribute a function. We declare the function as handle onPress. To implement this, we need a boolean state to monitor whether we are in focus or not, and this will be false by default. Now in the handle press, we call the set method of the state we just created and set it to true. After that, we can make use of the text input reference variable to trigger it to be in focus so that it can accept our inputs. Also in the handle on Blair, we can set our focus state to false. Now when we press on the input, we should be able to enter some values and they will be displayed. But this is a bit too plain and it would be better if we highlight the current input box just to make sure that it pops compared to the others. To do this, we start by creating an extra styled component. This will be based on the first OTP input and will just modify the border and background colors. Continuing in the to it function, we need to establish a few states. The first one is whether the current value in the mapping is the current digit or the current box to be focused on. This will be true if the index is the same as the length of the code. Secondly, we check if it is the last digit and that is true if the index is the same as the maximum length minus one. That is, we are on the last index. Also, we check if the code is full and this will be the case if the length of the code is the same as our maximum length. Now we check if the digit is focused and this will be true if it is the current digit or it is the last digit and the code is full. At this point, we want to toggle between the two OTP input components that we have. So we create a variable as styled OTP input. Now if the input container is focused and the digit is focused as well, we return the input focused component. Otherwise, we return the regular input component or box. Now we replace the regular input with a styled one. This should now take effect on the input boxes where the current one is highlighted. To proceed, we want to add some dynamism to our work. So to start, we want to update the value of pin ready to true whenever we have all the decades that we need. To achieve this, we need the use effect hook. In the effect function, we call set pin ready and the argument will be the comparison between the length of the code and the maximum length. In the cleanup function, we set pin ready to false to prevent any memory leak. Now as a second argument, we pass an array with code in it. This means that the function will only be required to run whenever the code value changes. To finish off with this file, we change the style of our hidden text input. We modify the position, dimensions and opacity to hide it fully without losing control through the reference attribute. Now when the keyboard is up and we press anywhere outside the boxes, we want it to be dismissed. To do this, we go a level higher into the app file and bring in the pressable and keyboard from React Native. We then replace the view with the pressable. Now through the unpress property, we call the dismiss function on the keyboard. This should make it possible to clear the keyboard by pressing anywhere outside the boxes. Now scrolling up, we see that the pin ready here is grayed out, meaning we didn't use it. Now let's say out of nowhere we have a submit button in our project. This is implemented with a styled button component, which is accompanied by a test component to match it. Using this pin ready, we can toggle the button to be active or disabled, depending on whether we have all the decades that we need. We start with the value of the disabled attribute. This will be true if the pin ready is false. Also for the background color of the button, if the pin is not ready, we want to set the color to a lighter color, otherwise we make use of a deeper one. We can also do the same for the text and change the color accordingly. The button should now be disabled until we have all our 4 digits. Now what if we need more than 4 digits? That's quite simple. We start by changing the value of our max length and follow that by adjusting the styling of the container and the boxes. Basically, increasing the width of the container and maybe decreasing the width of the boxes and adjusting the pattern till it looks like what you want should work perfectly. Now the link to the resulting source code 
will be available in the description below the like button. Also, we use this OTP input for a complete email verification system. So you can check that out and I will say a big thanks to my patrons.